Hey guys, welcome back to Clownfish TV. This is Neon. I am here with Geeky Sparkles. Hello. And well, well, well. Oh. Well, well, well. Well, it's not as well, well as you think. It's, it's yeah. It's more of a well, well without the third well. Just, just two wells? It's just two wells. Two wells. Uh, Screen Ramp put an article up. Why the Netflix He-Man remake works in Kevin Smith's Revelations doesn't. Uh, it is an interesting read. Now it does seem like they, 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 there's the a head, backhand slap The headlines that get you to read it, but then they kind of make a lot of slaps at you. Well, if you didn't like Kevin Smith, it's because, you know. Yeah, your your expectations were too high, basically. Mm -hmm. and you're the oh, one. and then you don't like women. You don't like and women. And that people review, they review bombed it. Yeah, well, this is what happens when you sell people one show and mm -hmm. then you give them something else. Oh, they mentioned that too, which we're going to get there in a minute. We're going to get there. We have to give credit to Toku Star. Yep. Thank you Thank so much you. Uh, for tagging us in on this. We're going to talk about this. Before we get into it any further, please subscribe for more pop culture news, views, and rants, guys. Over 239,000 subs. Uh, thank you for the support. We do talk about the animation industry, talk about the 1980s. We've mm -hmm. been talking a lot about He Man and the. Masters of the Universe, or I'm sorry, just Masters of the Universe. And you know, because we we talk about it because we actually care about them because it's something we grew up with. We actually collect the toys. I have a bunch of original She-Ra's. Um, if we didn't care about it, we wouldn't mention it. Yeah, and you know, this was a show, Revelation, believe it or not, believe it or not, that we were really looking forward yeah, to. Yeah, go back to the old videos. We were like, yay, and it's Kevin Smith, man, it'll be good, woohoo. And uh, oh, we only knew. Unfortunately, everything went to shit because we got wind of a rumor as to what the show was going to be, and it wasn't going to be about He Man. And it turned out those rumors were correct, but Kevin Smith spent the better part of a year denying it and dragging us. Yeah. Uh, in the media, and which we kind of knew then that it was probably true. Because yeah. Why, why bother? would he bother? Why bother? Messing with our little channel. Yeah. So anyway, uh, it is what it is. The show was what it was. Part two's coming out. I don't really give a shit. No. I think personally, I think it's going to be more bait and switch. But it was interesting because in between both parts of Revelation, the one we were looking forward to was another CGI He-Man show that we were not looking yes, forward to. Yes, we admittedly to. said it looked like crap. I mean, we, probably, we didn't think we were going to like it. We said that flat out. Flat out. And my God, I love the show. Yep. I, I did. I was like, I, I watched it. I'm like, oh, God, I'm here we go again. Let's just rip the Band-Aid off the day it came out. I'm like, we already were disappointed with Revelation. Let's watch this other steaming pile of shit, I'm sure, because it looks like Big Hero 6. And the show was actually good. And it feels like more He-Man than Masters of the Universe. He-Man's actually in it. Right, you know, and they actually don't have to belittle him because he's a dude. No, they don't. Adam is not a dumbass. And there's all. a lot of female characters or diversity in the show, and it's not like it's done well. And it's not like, by the way, do we mention women? By the way, do we mention diversity? By the way, by the no, it was like it's just He Man and his friends, and they're kicking ass, and it feels like He Man. Yeah, and a lot of media outlets. I mean, this this one kind of flew under the radar. Because a lot of media outlets are like, yeah, this one feels more like, even Polygon's like, this one feels more like He-Man than Revelation. Oh, yeah. Revelation. But see, now, now they're hearing it from a lot of people. So now that it's the accepted narratives. And now they're going to start writing articles like the one we're going to look at today about why it's it's actually better. But that's not actually what they're saying when you read the article. No. But uh, I thought it was interesting that Polygon was even defending it, too. And this mm -hmm. one, again, kind of low-key under the radar. Now, it is a... Uh, top to bottom reimagining, but it actually works. Uh, I think because, uh, again, expectations. We went into this knowing it wasn't a sequel. It it was going to be a reimagining. We knew it had more of a sci-fi bent to it. Um, but the creative team working on it had a really good track record mm -hmm. um, in the animation, specifically. We were hearing people that, that knew us, that knew we weren't looking forward to it, but knew some stuff about it. And they were like, just wait, just wait. We know where some of the ideas came from. It's not going to be as bad as it looks. Yeah, and it was actually really good. The quality is there. The voice acting is great. They actually hired, believe it or not, they actually hired uh, professional voice actors to do the voice acting. Right, and, and then the toys well. are good too. I mean, they're very—they feel very much like the old toys. Like yeah, you know, they, they feel like they're for kids, and they feel like they're sturdy, they're, they're sturdy old toys. And we even went and bought toys um, to support this show. Yeah, I uh, can't say the same for Revelation. Now again, I do have a person. Some of those toys are really cool. They are. But uh, he, won't, he refuses to buy them. I, I, I'm not going to give money to people who hate me. And uh, Kevin Smith yeah. actively hates us. As he said, he refused to apologize, and he said so many yeah, times. so and whatever. He, he won't apologize to us because he keeps claiming he didn't lie. But he did. So anyway. <sighs> I wonder if that works with his wife. 
<laughs> why the Netflix He-Man remake works in Kevin Smith's Revelations doesn't, coming from Screen Rant, a big defender of Revelations. Oh, well, don't. Th th that's a title to get you to read. Yeah. And they totally, they, they say one thing in the title and kind of something else in the art. Yeah, because they're even like, the He-Man remake works better than Kevin Smith's Revelation by satisfying fan expectations. The, fan, and the fans that are terrible people who hate women, as we find out later. The terrible, the terrible fans. And mm -hmm. thematically adhering more closely to the original. Well, it actually had He-Man in it. Mm -hmm. you know, Imagine it was, that, the show that was called He-Man, the Masters of the Universe. Was about, you know, there, there was another show about He-Man, not Tila. Yeah, so um, it said many who were nostalgic for the original He-Man complained about Smith's revelation, even going so far as to review bomb. They the always do series. this. Oh, come on. How come when, 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 when it goes against what they want, they say? It's a review bombing. But then some then couldn't people argue that they're review bombing things like Eternals because the critics review bomb that. I mean, maybe but no, when they do it, it's just because that's what it earned. But when the audience does it, and I and, and do audiences review bomb things? Yes. But they also review boost things too. And we've seen it many times with the She-Ra situation. There literally was a, a concerted effort on Instagram. Um, to go and vote it up, and there was things like "Yay Lesbians" as the the five star review. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, look, the audience score seventy six percent, average tomato meter eighty percent for this, and this this show was so low key. There was a virtually no promotion for it. You really hated it just by the looks of it, and you weren't even going to watch it. I'm like, oh come on, this looks like Big Hero Six, and and the th look, the only thing I hate about the show is the theme song. Oh, the theme song's pretty bad. I just skip it. I'm like, I can't. The theme song is pretty bad. I can't bad. listen to that. But, but look, we were wrong we were based wrong on appearances this on yep. this one. And we will we'll say so. If we're wrong about something, we will say so. And it's actually really, really good. So I recommend you go give it a chance. Absolutely. Um, This this was my, like, there were a couple things this year that I was completely caught off guard with that I, I things I thought I would hate that I actually loved. And this is at the top of the list for mm -hmm. me. Because I really, you remember, you weren't even going to watch it. And I'm like, when it came out, like Saturday or whenever it came out, I'm like, ah, fine, I'll just, I'll go watch it. I watched watch. it actually in the other room. I, could, I was going to see the TV from where I was. And I'm like watching it. I'm like, I'm like, oh, this is good. I'm this watching is actually, it too. This isn't bad. I mean, this isn't, this isn't Filmation He-Man, but it's, it's really not bad. I, it you was. Know? And it's I was not like, bad. Oh, that's good. And by the, the theme song was awful. And I'm like, oh my God. And then after the first episode, I was like, oh. Oh, this isn't bad. I like this. Then we got Skeletor. I'm like, holy shit, this Skeletor is actually a threat. Mm -hmm. You know, he's actually threatening. And um, I was like, I I like this. I didn't expect to. Um, so well, kudos. Let's uh, go back to the to the, to the, the article. It's claiming it's not one thing, but it's actually just going to use it to dunk on fans. Yeah. So uh, Revelation and Masters of the Universe took very different approaches to adapting the same source material, but only one of them sparked such viewer outrage. The He-Man remake works better by satisfying fan expectations in a way that Revelation okay, does yeah, not. Okay. You know, just wait. It's just wait for it. The He-Man remake actually focuses on He-Man. Well, again, look, the biggest mistake Revelation made beyond not having enough He-Man in it was the way they marketed the show. The first trailer we saw was all He-Man, well, He-Man, He-Man, He-Man. And then, whoop, bait and switch. Well, we knew it was coming. We knew it was coming. People were like, oh, clownfish, you're liars. It's a, definitely a He-Man show. Look at that first trailer that all clearly takes place in the same episode. You liars. You don't have any inside information. And we were just sitting there like, just wait, sweet cheeks. We actually had our source come to us and say, oh, no. No, we're right. You just you just wait. You mm -hmm. just wait. This is going to be fun. You just wait. Kevin Smith's revelation received very different responses from critics and audiences. On Rotten Tomatoes, the critic score is 94%, while audiences only gave it 39% at the time of writing. The disparity largely originates from original fans' anger at the focus on Tila instead of He-Man in the first half of the show. In episode one, He-Man and Skeletor seemingly die, and although He-Man returns in flashbacks throughout the series, not really, it focuses more on his friends trying to restore him and magic back to Eternia. Tila, Tila especially takes center stage in Revelation as she deals with the sense of betrayal and being lied to about Prince Adam's alter ego. Yeah, she acts like a whiny bitch. If she was your friend, I'd say dump her immediately because that is, what, not Tila from the original it's show It's not Tila. She never would have behaved no, that way. No, She never would have behaved that way. I'm sorry. And then they talked about, uh, where was that? Oh, as interesting as it has been for the show to provide more screen time for characters who have not been very fleshed out in the past. Have you watched the original show? Because Tila was really well fleshed out in the past. She was, she was, yeah, definitely one of the most important 
most well thought out fleshed out. She might actually might be more fleshed out than Adam and He Man in the original show. Well, let me introduce you to 2002 He Man. Yeah. Because no one's ever fleshed him out before. Go watch that one, honey, before you write articles. Um, not all viewers say it that way. Some even going as far as to accuse Netflix of falsely advertising it as a He Man show when it actually isn't. Because Kevin Smith kept saying He Man was front and center. He said he does know stepping aside for Tila. And Tila doesn't have a girlfriend. Technically, technically, those are not lies. Technically, but it is a distortion of the truth. And then they're like, well, they hate Tila. They hate Tila. Tila's always been important. Yes, fans know Tila has always been important. Fans know that. But this is not Tila from the original show. This is some cheerleader bitch who um, is just like, I don't know, she's got a petrol period or what, but she's like the biggest, she's unlikable. Oh, you like that? She's just downright unlikable in this show. This is not how she'd behave. No. And then they keep saying, well, people that, that love the show would know she was always important. No one ever said she wasn't. In fact... I would argue that if you had told people the truth and you said, well, here's an interesting idea. What would happen if He-Man gets sidelined and then the rest of the masters have to step in and maybe Tila has to step in um, to fill his shoes until they can find him again or until they get, you know, get this worked out? People would have been like, okay. Yeah, it was, yeah, it was a deliberate attempt to cash in on nostalgia. Even all the merchandise, the tie-in merch. For this, it was all He-Man. It was all focused mm -hmm. on He-Man, and he was in it for not even a full episode. Right, and I still know? don't think I, I still don't know how this is going to go for the second half. But I, well, I, I, think it's I, the I have same concerns. Thing. But you know, they keep start, trying to argue this this Tila thing. Everybody hates women, which is the biggest load of shit. Because a lot of female fans of He-Man are like, I don't like this Tila either. No. But you know, of course, we're just internalized misogynists and don't know it. Um, I'm tired of this shit. And I would argue that it was more misogynistic of Netflix and Smith and Company to sit there and say that they didn't feel that Tila could carry the show if they were honest. The people they didn't feel people would watch it if they were honest. So they deliberately kind of baited and switched. Mm -hmm. That to me is more misogynistic because I think fans would have watched it. Anyway, it goes on as to say, Smith remarked in an interview via Variety that anybody that's like, oh man, there's not enough He-Man or something like that doesn't understand the show we based it on. He-Man and the Masters of the Universe. Yeah, that show? Yeah. yeah it was literally called He-Man yeah. and the Masters of the Universe. Yeah. He-Man every episode. Yeah. So, so let me get this straight. No fan fundamentally understands this show as well as he does. The guy who didn't watch it. who admitted Right. He he made, didn't and watch he made fun it. of it in he interviews of many it. times prior. I mean, that guy. Cash grab. But, you know, <laughs> right, right. I'm so glad that, you know, Kevin Smith's here to tell the fans that they don't fundamentally understand the show that he does. Yeah. And they're talking about, you know, the fans reacted better to the CGI show because they were like, well, it had He-Man front and center. Uh, it never hid what it was. It was... You know, again, people, fans can deal with changes to franchises as long as they don't feel like they've been hoodwinked. As, as long as they're they're fair to the franchise. And they don't feel like they've been disrespected. The franchise hasn't been destroyed. They're not being dragged. You know, again, the CGI He-Man, very different from the original He-Man, but it did not feel like a slap in the face. Well, not just that. You didn't have people out there, you know, harassing fans and, and no. you know, dragging fans and calling them liars. Nobody said anything. All the marketing, all the marketing push was on Revelation. This one, the CGI one, just kind of snuck up alongside of it. Right. It was like the she show. People might not have got as upset had they not had a whole PR push that basically was if you're an old school Shira fan and you don't love this show, it's because you're a terrible pro person in some form. You, you're a man, you hate women, you're mad because you can't fap to Shira, even though the fan art for Shira now is basically her and the cat door art. A lot of times for flicking the bean to, that's fine. Um, they had all these excuses where they attacked the fans first and then they try to say, but watch our show. Or you're a problematic person. Maybe they just put it out there and didn't attack fans. They might have had a better response. Now, this this is not true. They're like being a sequel hinders Smith's revelation. No, the problem is it was actually billed as a sequel, and it's not a true sequel. Exactly. Uh, because they couldn't do it. They couldn't actually make a true sequel, I guess, to Filmation He Man. But there were or a lot. It was a mishmash. So it was like, again, who was this for? Because you know when you sell it as a He Man centric show. For fans of the filmation series, and it turns out that it's neither of those mm -hmm. things. And then, you know, new audiences don't have a point of entry because you well, already mentioned that. Yeah, you already assume that everybody knows the characters and they know the drill. Well, they and, throw a lot of comic stuff in there too, which makes sense because Kevin Smith. And there's a lot of comics lore in there that wasn't actually in the show. Um, so, but that I mean, I won't I won't knock them on that. They do have some really cool lore things in there. Uh, they really do. But um, like they, they said, there's not like if you're not an old school fan, 
there's no point for you to come in. But if you are an old school fan and you don't love it, then they don't want you either. Yeah. So, I, I mean, that was that was what we said in our, our review is we're like, I don't know who this is for because it's not for old school fans. There's a, clearly a, a, I mean, there are a lot of nods to the toy line and to the comics and anything that's not filmation, you know, based, but it also feels like there are a lot of middle fingers, mm-hmm. you know, kind of low key to fans too. And, well, and if you don't like it, it's just because you, you're a problematic person who hates diversity in women. And uh, beyond that, like the, the thing to do with this particular storyline would have been, frankly, to reboot the show completely mm-hmm. and, and you know, have that baseline of He-Man versus Skeletor. This is what's normal. And then when we get to season three, we can change it up a little bit because we already know right. these characters. And you can introduce this new version of Tila who clearly is not the original Tila, mm. you know, and you can do whatever you want to do. But they just kind of drop people into it, kill off He-Man the first episode. Like, I can't imagine being someone who's not familiar with the mythos at all, watch trying to watch a show and being like, I don't understand. The prince is He-Man. How does this work? Skeletor is trying to get in this castle. Who? Why would you, though? What? And as I said, some people were saying that on Twitter. They're like, well, I liked it and I never watched the original. And it's like, but then how do you know what the hell's going on? Yeah, because it was it, there were a lot of inside jokes. Again, there was some fan service, but it it depended on you having knowledge of not just the filmation show, but the toy line and the comics. And, and look, you know, you are allowed to like it. If you like it, that's completely fine. You are allowed to like it. I don't know why people keep saying that we say they're not. You are. But what we have a problem is people are allowed to not like it, and not liking it doesn't make you insert insult here because it's easier to dismiss people by insulting them and thinking, well, their opinion doesn't matter because they're lower than me. Um, and then you can just dis- dismiss it and walk away. No, people don't like it and they have good reasons to not like it. So this is interesting too. The He-Man remake knows its audience. And they talk about how this show knows it's made for kids. It's mm-hmm. no, uh, you know, it's made for people that have never watched anything He-Man mm-hmm. before. Um, the remake better honors He-Man's roots by focusing on a younger audience and is also more accessible just as picking up where a previous story left left off risks excluding new fans to well, revelation. Well, I would give the author that because that is true. Yep, by aging up the narrative, it further limits who can watch a show. I agree with that. The last thing he himself would ever do is want to turn someone away. I agree with that, too. But the article comes across as, why does it do better? And at the end, they finally say something. But most of it's talking about how people, well, they're just, you know, they just rotten tomatoes. They, they downvoted it, and they review bombed it, and they just don't understand Kevin Smith's genius, and they are against women. And it's like, that's not what happened. Would you yeah. stop these weak ass narratives? Yeah, but I mean, even when you try to, you know, put them up against each other and you weigh the pros and the cons of both shows, the CGI He Man is way better than Revelation. And I'm again, I'm completely floored. I expected to hate both of them. I thought this was going to well, go. If you down. liked one, you thought you were going to like Revelation over. Yeah, this. I was excited about Revelation. I'm like, oh yeah, Revelation oh, looks. We found out the truth. Yeah, it looks pretty cool. And I was like, oh yeah, there's this new He Man too, and I don't know, it looks weird. You know, it looks weird. But this one actually feels more like He-Man. It's just, it's a more science fiction mm-hmm. take on it. So this kind of blows that whole argument they keep trying to make that fans, the, the old school fans don't want any changes. The old school fans won't like changes. The old school fans never want anything different out of the water because a lot of those, the fans like this version. It is very different than the original He-Man, but it feels like the original He-Man. And they keep trying to say, you know, oh, they won't like it because they're all set in their ways and you can't change things. That's not true. But you have to do it in a respectful way that feels right. And this one does. Yeah, it just feels like they set out to make a quality show. Right. Ma- um, imagine that. Yeah, imagine just, you want to make a good show over, like, you know, trying to shove things in there for diversity points. Yeah, and this was, you know, the, the new, the uh, you know, Kevin Smith's revelation feels like a nostalgia grab. It feels like a, f- a fanfic. It but, does feel very fanfic. But a fanfic written by a guy who's not really that familiar with He-Man anyway, so I think he's probably relying on his toy guy to tell him. Well, it's funny watching him you know, when he talks, like, oh, we inserted this lore. Like, he's like all impressed with how creative he is, and he's all, like, giddy about his own creativity, and we're just sitting here like... Okay, well, that piece of lore is kind of cool. I'd give you that, but the whole thing overall sucks. Yeah, and and frankly, everything Revelation did, 2002 He-Man did it better. Exactly, and they always step over that. Yeah. Like, I would say this writer about Tila and these other characters that are now fleshed out. They were fleshed out before. Very, very, very well in the 2002 He-Man, what do they call it, 2000X now? Yeah. In that He-Man version. They were very well fleshed out and, and done then and done better. I think it's so funny because people are like, well, finally, Adam doesn't look exactly like He-Man. I'm like, bitch, please. They figured, they they addressed that 20 years ago. 
and they that, just keep stepping over it. Yeah, and same with Tila, and same with the origins of the bad guys, and Keldor, and all of that stuff. They did it. They did it back then. They did it very well. Um, I still, 2002 is still my all-time favorite He-Man anything, but uh, I do like the CG one. And you know, I, I, this could have worked with Tila being the lead. It could have yeah. worked, but they made her so damn unlikable and they miscast her for voice actress. Sarah Michelle Gellar does, does a shitty job. I'm sorry. I'm just going to say it. She does a crappy job as Tila. She do, it doesn't fit. It doesn't. It really doesn't fit. And they could have made it better. And they just chose, they just had to, they ruined Tila. So it's not as bad enough they ruined He-Man and they had to go ruin Tila too. Yeah, it just it just failed on so many levels. But no, and it's just because you're a terrible person for not yeah, liking it. You're a horrible person. All right, we're going to wrap this one up. Yep. All right, please subscribe for more pop culture news, views, and rants, guys. We'll talk to you later. Bye.